This anime begins by showing a witch named Vervatos who becomes very powerful over time, so that people no longer think of him as a human and that he is the demon lord with terrible powers. Becoming too powerful makes Vervatos unable to be defeated by anyone. However, this bore him because he wanted to know what it was like to be defeated and engage in battle with an opponent of equal strength. With no one who can understand him, he decides to reincarnate as an average boy named Ard Meteor. Ard, who comes from an ordinary family, lives with his parents, Jack and Carla, who love him very much. However, the development of magic in the future became much slower. When he was 10 years old, Ard tried to find friends he could play with. However, when he tried to approach several boys his age, they turned away from him, thinking he was a scary boy. Ard then became annoyed with himself for not having social skills, so he vented his anger by using magic techniques, which ravaged the forest. After that, Ard was visited by Major Allhide, an elf man who was also a good friend of his father. Ard told Allhide the problem he was experiencing. Seeing him looking gloomy and realizing that he really wanted to have friends, Allhide gave him some advice so that he could make friends and be good friends with them. Upon learning that, Ard became excited again and rushed off to find someone who wanted to be friends with him. On the way, Ard saw a little girl doing a magic technique. He tries to approach her, hoping to befriend her. However, she seems uncomfortable around someone, so she tries to escape. Ard then chased her until finally arriving at her house, where he found out that she was Allhide's daughter visiting his house with her father. Allhide introduced his daughter, Irina, to Ard and his parents. He told Ard that Irina was often ostracized by her friends for her elf heritage, so she is not close to other people. Ard still wants to make Irina his first friend, so he does everything that Allhide suggests so that he can be friends with his daughter. However, Irina always ignores him and doesn't even hesitate to use her magic power to attack him. But before we continue, we want to thank Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Did you know the internet can be the best place and, at the same time, the least safe place for you? That's why you need a VPN as the most effective way to protect your internet traffic and keep your identities private online. That's also the reason I rely on Atlas VPN as my online world protector so that my internet traffic goes through an encrypted tunnel that nobody can see, including hackers, governments, and my internet service provider. Why should we choose Atlas VPN? Because all the conveniences are in Atlas VPN, ranging from unlimited devices, 4K fast streaming, 24-7 support, wire guard protocol, ad blockers, to email protection. And most surprising of all, you can get all that for just $1.99 per month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now is the time for you to protect your privacy and increase your security with a trusted, reliable VPN. With Atlas VPN, you can choose among 750-plus high-speed VPN servers and enjoy a fast and stable connection anywhere. Atlas VPN is definitely one of the best VPN services available on the market. Grab the deal today. Atlas VPN special 3-year deal only for $1.99 per month. One night, while Ard was lying in his bed and thinking of ways he could be friends with Irina, he was suddenly startled by the commotion around his house. After that, he left the house and found the residents running to save themselves from a herd of goblins that suddenly attacked the city. When Ard was about to help his father fight the goblins, Allhide arrived and asked Ard to find Irina's whereabouts. Without thinking, he immediately used his magic power, which allowed him to fly, which made Jack and Allhide dumbfounded when they saw it. Ard finally found Irina's whereabouts, surrounded by a herd of goblins in the middle of the forest, and managed to defeat the goblins effortlessly. Afterward, he returned to Irina and asked her to be friends with him. At first, she rejected his friendship because, all this time, no one had ever really wanted to be friends with her, and in the end, they always ostracized her. However, Ard convinces Irina that he will never leave her and wants to be friends with her. And so far, he has never had friends because everyone shuns him and considers him a scary figure. Seeing his seriousness, she finally melted, and they finally became friends. Several years later, Irina, who is now a teenager and has grown into a beautiful girl, meets Art at his house and suggests that they apply to the Laval National Academy of Magic. He agreed with her idea, so they enrolled in the Academy of Magic. Headmaster Golde immediately enrolls Art and Irina, as they are the children of the three great heroes, Allhide, and Art's parents, Jack and Carla. They soon become the most popular students at school, and their schoolmates race to get close to them to become their friends. On the other hand, a succubus named Ginny is being bullied by a male student named Araldo Spencer, the son of a duke whom Ginny's family are servants. Ard and Irina try to defend Ginny and tell Araldo to apologize to her. However, the arrogant Araldo instead challenges Ard to a duel with him. Their dispute was then interrupted by Lady Olivia, one of the teachers there, who turned out to be one of the four heavenly kings, the demon lord's subordinates. Knowing that Olivia turned out to be a teacher at the academy, Ard became restless, worried that his true identity would be known. 
At the same time, Olivia, who seemed to have realized the magnitude of Art's power, allowed Araldo and Art to duel each other and show their abilities. At first, Araldo's friends underestimate Art and think he will not be able to beat Araldo, who turns out to be one of the best students in the school. Knowing that Olivia would witness the duel in person, Art decided to refrain from releasing too much magic power, thus making her suspect him. However, a glimmer of Art's power turned out to be able to overwhelm Araldo until he finally decided to give up on him so that he would stop his attack. After winning the duel, Art realized that he might be overusing his powers, as Olivia seemed suspicious of him. Art avoided the questions asked by Olivia as much as possible so that his identity would not be discovered. After that, Art and Irina then gave Ginny mental support so that she could rise from adversity and not experience trauma after being a victim of bullying. In fact, they became good friends and teammates in clearing the exams held in the dungeon. At first, Ginny felt she was only a burden to Art and Irina, who had immense magical power. Realizing this, he convinces Ginny that she also has great abilities and teaches her a magic trick called script magic so that she can help them complete missions in the dungeon. When they were about to continue their journey through the dungeon, they accidentally entered a trap, so the three of them fell to the bottom of the dungeon, where Minotaur, the dungeon's boss, had been hiding all this time. Knowing someone had entered his trap, Minotaur headed straight for the place and found three students from the Magic Academy. Art, dealing directly with him, seemed relaxed and asked Ginny to do script magic to defeat the dungeon's boss. Actually, Art could actually defeat the Minotaur with just a snap of his finger. However, he wanted to restore Ginny's confidence, so he asked her to defeat Minotaur. After gathering all her courage, Ginny was finally able to defeat Minotaur and overcome the trauma of the oppression she often experienced. A few days later, the headmaster asked Art to join a tournament and win it, so their school could get an education budget because they were currently experiencing a financial crisis. Since Art didn't want to show off his strength, especially in front of so many people, he immediately rejected the headmaster's request. However, the headmaster still persuaded him to be willing to participate in the tournament, and Art said he would think about it first. When Art is thinking about how to refuse the headmaster's request to enter the magic tournament, he is surprised by the appearance of Ginny, who asks him to date her. Irina, who knew about it, then did not stay silent and said she also wanted to go on a date with him. Art had no choice but to go on a date with the two girls. The next day, the three started their date by watching the drama show the demon lord Varvados. On the way, the three of them overheard the conversation of a group of robed black men who were plotting the assassination of the queen. Upon hearing that, Art plans to stop the plans of the robed men and arrest them for the safety of the queen and also her kingdom. However, Irina and Ginny insisted on helping him, so the trio followed them. Art and his companions follow them into an underground tunnel, where they discover that the robed men are trapping them and are about to take them as hostages to fight the queen. Art seemed calm and facing them and instead uttered mocking words to anger the robed men, so one of them became angry and attacked Art with his magic power. However, the attack did not affect him, the demon lord. After that, he could easily annihilate those robed men with just a snap of a finger. The leader of the robed group, the black man, who apparently managed to survive Ard's attack, transformed into a sinister demon. Instead of attacking Ard with his demonic power, he fled from there by flying with his wings. Of course, Ard didn't let the demon get away with it and wreak havoc in the city later, so he chased the demon to the center of the city, where he destroyed it. The residents who witnessed how Ard defeated the demon then cheered for his victory and cheered him for defeating the demon. His heroic action was heard by the queen, so Ard and his companions were invited to the palace by the queen to get an award. Ard and Irina was awarded the title of a Tier 5 witch, a title high enough for a witch in the kingdom, while Ginny was awarded the title of a Tier 3 witch. Ard, not wanting to be the center of attention because of his magical powers, politely declined the award and begged the queen to provide the education budget for Laval National Academy of Magic, so that he would not have to enter the tournament as requested by the headmaster. Hearing this request, the queen was even more impressed with Ard, who she thought was very humble, so she instead gifted both of them to him. On the other hand, the gang of men in black robes has not been completely destroyed by Ard, and they are planning to take revenge on him. Not only that, but they also plan to conquer the kingdom and rule the world under their leader. Meanwhile, the headmaster seems to be in a serious conversation with Lady Jessica, one of the teachers at the Magic Academy, where the headmaster expresses his desire to recruit Ard as a teacher of Magic Academy. However, because Ard did not participate in the tournament after he managed to get the budget from the Queen, the headmaster became pessimistic that the funders would oppose his idea because Ard had never shown them his magical abilities. Upon learning that, Lady Jessica said she had a way of dealing with the problem. In the evening, Lady Jessica met Ard, who was with Irina and Ginny. She then suggested that Irina and Ginny join the tournament because they could be Ard's apprentices and would learn about magic from him. 
According to Jessica, if Irina and Ginny manage to advance to the final round, Art will gain the trust of the teacher council and funders, so the headmaster can recruit him as a teacher at the Magic Academy. At first, Art refused to become a teacher at the school because he just wanted to live his days as an ordinary student. However, Irina and Ginny persuade him to accept Jessica's offer, and because of that, he could not refuse and allowed them to join the Magic Tournament. Long story short, the Magic Tournament finally started. The tournament arena seemed to be filled with spectators who were very enthusiastic about watching the tournament. Major Allhide was the guest of honor along with Ard's parents, Jack and Carla. In the match in the first round, Irina and Ginny could easily knock down their opponents, so both of them managed to advance to the next round. They always end the fight after a battle with victory, until finally, they advance to the final round and will fight each other. However, before the final match began, a group of men in black robes infiltrated the tournament venue, wreaked havoc by transforming into demons, and began attacking the spectators. Seeing this, Jessica asked Olivia and Ard to save the audience while she helped the participants who fought against the demons. When Irina and Ginny had a hard time battling a demon in front of them, Allhide arrived just in time and immediately helped them defeat the demon. But then, Jessica stabs Allhide in the back, revealing that she's not Jessica, but Elzard, the frenzied dragon king. She said she had murdered Jessica and deliberately took her identity to infiltrate the academy. She stated that her purpose was to make Irina her prisoner. Seeing Irina about to be kidnapped by her, Ginny tried to attack her, but Elzard could easily knock Ginny down. After the incident, Ard tries to heal Allhide, who was badly injured by Elzard's attack and is informed about Irina's kidnapping. Allhide then takes Ard to the Royal Armory, where he can choose certain royal heirlooms that he can use to save Irina. Meanwhile, Irina, who is now in Elzard's magical prison, asks about the purpose of Elzard kidnapping her. She reveals that she plans to sacrifice Irina to a monster called the Orphan of Chaos as a ritual to summon an evil god and destroy the world that she hates. Not only that, but Elzard also mentions Irina's family secret that Ard doesn't know yet, which secret might make him hate Irina. On the other hand, Ard and Ginny finally arrived at where Irina was being held hostage, where he promised her that he would save Irina and asked her not to worry. Elzard had already started a ritual to summon a monster that would devour Irina's body. However, the ritual is thwarted by Ard, who arrives there in time to save her. Seeing this, Elzard became very angry and then revealed the truth about Irina's family, which was the true royal family and descendants of the evil gods. However, Ard does not seem to care about this and still considers Irina his best friend. He then challenges Elzard to a fight with him. Shortly afterward, they engage in a fight, where Elzard immediately becomes desperate, so she reverts to her true dragon form. Seeing the changes in Elzard, Ard shows his true power and reverts to his Varvatos form. He deduces that Elzard's true motivation was loneliness, but that was no excuse for threatening Irina, and he eventually slays her. After Elzard is defeated, he reverts to his normal form. As they walk home, Irina is frightened of Ard at first but remembers that he accepted her, even after learning her secret, and vows to become strong enough to fight by his side. This anime continues with a young elf girl named Sylphie, who spent thousands of years training in a dungeon to defeat the demon lord Varvatos. Sylphie is the younger sister of Lydia Beginsgate, the servant and close friend to Varvatos, who later reincarnated as Ard Meteor. After finally exiting the dungeon, Sylphie panicked and was confused because the atmosphere around her had changed drastically. She then meets a masked man who informs her that time moves differently within that dungeon, so 3,000 years have passed while she is inside. She reveals that Varvatos and her sister, Lydia, died long ago, but Varvatos' soul reincarnated as Ard Meteor. Meanwhile, at the Laval National Academy of Magic, the headmaster announces that they will be holding a festival, including a stage performance in which the headmaster wants Ard to perform. Not only that, but the headmaster also informed about a threatening letter addressed to their school, sent by someone named Lars Al Ghul, and asked Ard, Irina, and Ginny to help secure their school from the threat. When the three of them finally return to class, Art is surprised by the appearance of Sylphie, who approaches him and confronts him about his reincarnation and what happened to Lydia. However, Art feigns ignorance, while Olivia, who knew Sylphie 3,000 years ago, is very interested in her claims that Art is the demon lord Varvatos. To avoid Olivia's suspicion, Art accepts Sylphie's challenge to a duel with her. He intended to hold back his strength against her, even planning to lose to her so that Olivia and Sylphie wouldn't know his true identity. However, Sylphie loses her temper and casts a magic technique, destroying the surrounding school buildings. Ard and Olivia tried to stop her, but she persisted in wanting to beat Ard with all her might. Seeing this, Irina then scolded Sylphie for causing damage to the school and frightening the students. But Sylphie actually burst into tears when she saw Irina's face, which was very similar to her sister, Lydia. However, because of this resemblance, she listened to Irina's words, apologized for all the chaos, and finally stopped the fight. 
Soon afterward, Ard's class decides that the performance should be on the life of the demon lord Varvados, with him as Varvados by popular demand, Irina as Lydia, and Sylphie as the evil god. For their class project, they decide to host a maid cafe during the festival with the maids in very risky outfits designed by Ginny, which the girls only agree to wear after learning they would be allowed to serve Ard. At the same time, the masked man watches all this without them knowing and looks forward to how Sylphie will react when she learns what happened 3,000 years ago. The day of the school festival finally arrived. Art and Irina were seen walking around the school and conducting patrols to secure the event until it was finished. While enjoying a cup of ice cream, they were shocked by an explosion that came from the school's backyard, where the explosion was apparently caused by Sylphie using her magic power to threaten an old man whom she thought was a demon. They rushed over to Sylphie and Lady Olivia, who told her that the old man was not a demon, as Sylphie had alleged, but just an ordinary human. After dealing with the chaos, Irina and Ard discuss a sacred tree that is said to hold a magic item sealed by the Great Sword King centuries ago. They ask Lady Olivia about the legend, but she was reluctant to answer their questions and instead shifted the conversation to the Great Sword King tournament. She informed them that she would participate in the tournament with Ard, whom she had secretly registered. Hearing this, Ard became annoyed that Olivia had acted presumptuously by registering him for the tournament without asking his permission first. However, she threatens to investigate and reveal his background to everyone if he refuses to participate in the tournament. Ard, annoyed that Olivia was always acting casually, then decided to calm down by visiting the maid cafe held by his class. Arriving there, Ard was even more irritated by Sylphie's behavior, who easily lost her temper and caused a riot. The situation becomes even worse when the girls in his class fight with each other to decide who should serve Ard. But then, the commotion suddenly stopped when they heard the announcement about the Great Sword King tournament starting tomorrow. However, what surprised Ard the most was the tournament prize which was said to be a replica of Vald Galgus, the sword wielded by the Great Sword King. Knowing Ard would enter the tournament, Irina and Ginny finally signed up to participate in the Great Sword King tournament, as did Sylphie, who joined the tournament because she wanted to get the prize. The next day, Olivia, Ard, Sylphie, and Irina won their fight quite easily and advanced to the semi-finals. Even though Ginny was overwhelmed by her opponent, she finally won the fight and advanced to the semi-finals, following her friends. After the match, Ginny invited Ard to compete with her in a Miss and Mr. Beauty contest. At the sight of the contest, Ard meets Araldo, whose appearance has changed slightly after no longer being a bully. He revealed to Ard that he and Ginny were good friends when they were children, but his father taught him that anyone who was not nobility was inferior, leading to him bullying her. Araldo hopes one day to apologize and be forgiven. Hearing his confession, Ard became reminded of his past with Lydia and felt sorry for Sylphie for never telling her what had happened to her sister. After Ard and Ginny won the Miss and Mr. Beauty contest, they rushed back to the Great Sword King tournament location to continue the match. In the semi-finals, Ard faced Lady Olivia, who did not hesitate to exert her abilities against him, forcing him to release his true power and reveal his true identity. However, Ard accidentally makes an attack that sends Olivia flying far out of the arena, which immediately disqualifies him from the tournament. As a result, the fight was eventually cancelled, as Olivia had to be disqualified for not making it back in time. In the next match, Irina will face Ginny, who instead fights over Ard, and Irina finally manages to win the fight quite easily. In the final round, Irina will face Sylphie, who easily defeats her opponent. On the other hand, the masked man is seen watching Ard and the others from a distance, where he then decides to put his plan into action. Before the final match of the Great Sword King tournament, Irina and Sylphie then joined Ard and their classmates to perform a drama about the life of the demon Lord Varvados. Irina was nervous and worried that her performance would worsen Lydia's image. However, Ard and Sylphie then encouraged her by saying that she not only has a physical resemblance to Lydia, but also has the same spirit and self-confidence as the female warrior. Hearing that, Irina regained her confidence and managed to do her role as Lydia very well. At the same time, Ard realizes the stage performance is based on the Battle of Avia de Saviers, which he won thanks to Sylphie laying magical traps on the battlefield and claiming the enemy commander's sword, Demi's Argus, for herself. The drama show ended successfully, and they received great appreciation from the audience. On the other hand, Sylphie even looks gloomy because, after a drama show, she misses her sister, who has been gone for a long time. Even though Irina has an almost identical physical resemblance to her sister, until then, Irina still cannot replace Lydia in her heart. Knowing that Sylphie was sad because of Lydia, the masked man approached her and said something to her. The next day at the tournament location, Ard and Ginny were seen talking about Sylphie's behavior being weird after doing a drama show. Not long after, Sylphie arrived there and then asked Ard to come to meet her at the sacred tree at night. He immediately realized that she did look strange and wondered what had happened to her. 
Long story short, Irina and Sylphie entered the arena to have the final match of the Great Sword King tournament. However, Sylphie could easily defeat Irina and win the tournament, so she deserved the prize of victory, namely the sword Vald Galgas, which seemed to be very valuable to Sylphie. In the evening, Art complied with Sylphie's request and met her at the Sacred Tree, where she was waiting for him carrying the sword Vald Galgas. On the other hand, Irina and Ginny, worried about Ard and Sylphie, quietly watched them from a distance. Sylphie reveals the replica is actually the real Vald Galgas, and the magic item sealed in the tree is its power source. She combines the two into the complete Vald Galgas and also summons her Demi's Argus before trying to kill Ard. The masked man watches them joyfully, revealing that he placed Sylphie under mind control and showed her a memory of Varvato's murdering Lydia. A fierce battle ensued between Ard and Sylphie, whose mind was controlled by the masked man, so she was so ambitious to kill Ard, who she thought was the reincarnation of the demon lord Varvatos. Seeing the fierce battle between them, Irina and Ginny then came out of their hiding place and tried to help Ard in his fight against Sylphie. However, they were no match for Sylphie, who had become stronger after thousands of years of hard training. She could easily knock them down, even she didn't hesitate to hurt the two girls. Seeing his two friends defeated like that, Art had no choice but to change his form into Varvados and fight Sylphie in earnest. In the middle of the fight, Sylphie heard Lydia's voice from inside Vald Galgas's sword, which then broke her mind control of Sylphie, so she then stopped the fight. At the same time, the masked man finally appears in front of them and reveals that his goal is to resurrect his true master at the expense of Irina. The masked man apparently manipulated Sylphie to kill Ard, but his attempt failed. After that, the masked man took out Vald Galgas's and Demi's Argus's swords. However, the two swords reject him as he is not powerful enough to wield them, so Ard destroys him. Lydia Apparition then appears from Vald Galgas's sword and tells Sylphie that her death was not Varvato's fault and wants her to focus on living a full life. Before disappearing, Lydia calls Ard a dumbass, but he is not surprised. The next day, Ard and his classmates wanted to do activities outside of school and took a horse-drawn carriage to the location. During the trip, Ard spends his free time playing cards with Irina and Ginny. However, time suddenly freezes except for them. Shortly afterward, they get sent to a white void and meet a mysterious boy claiming to be a god. Before the three of them could confirm or ask anything, the boy suddenly disappeared. After that, it was as if they had been teleported to a magical place, and Art immediately realized that they were currently in ancient times after seeing the two moons in the sky. Not only returning to the past, Art also explained that they were in the territory of the demon Lord Varvatos, precisely in Makina District, which was included in the Vardia Empire's territory. Art assumed that they might return to where they came from if they had successfully completed the task the mysterious boy gave. In the middle of the conversation, they were surprised by the screams of a girl trying to escape from the pursuit of a giant scorpion. Seeing that, Art rushed to it and could easily annihilate the creature with his magic power. The girl they saved turned out to be one of Olivia's subordinates, who at that time were still part of the four heavenly kings under the leadership of Varvatos. Irina and Ginny almost leaked about their time travel experience, but Art immediately changed the subject, so Olivia didn't feel suspicious of them. Olivia then invites them to her camp because right now, she is fighting against enemies who are otherworldly beings. After knowing that Ard can easily defeat the giant scorpion, Olivia asks him to join her army to defeat their enemy. He is willing to join her army as long as she is willing to fulfill his requirements. Ard requests that Olivia and her army serve under Verda since she doesn't fight on the front lines, and the girls should be safe. But he did not explain it in detail, so Olivia had no choice but to agree to the terms he proposed. After that, Ard and his companions rushed to Verda's place. Arriving there, Irina and Ginny were surprised because Verda's appearance was completely different from what was depicted in historical records. Ard then reveals to Verda about those who come from the future and have time travel. Upon hearing that, she was willing to help Ard and his companions return to their time because she became interested in researching such a rare occurrence as time travel. Not long after, Lydia and Sylphie arrived at Verda's place to request reinforcements. Lydia, who saw Ginny's presence, became interested in her and tried to recruit Ginny to join her army. Knowing Lydia's true intentions, Ard prevents her from recruiting Ginny, making her angry, and challenges him to fight with her. Lydia, Varvato's right-hand woman, has a very strong fighting ability, so Ard has a hard time facing her, and their duel ends in a draw. After seeing Ard's ability in the battle, Lydia asks him to join her army, which will fight the enemy on the front line. But Ard refused and asked her to meet him with the demon lord Varvatos. Lydia said that she didn't mind meeting him with Varvatos, but before that, she asked him and his companions to prove themselves in battle. After that, Ard and his companions are allowed to live with Lydia and Sylphie in the house of a girl named Ladima. That night, when Ard was contemplating alone, Ladima met him and said that he and his companions had been considered friends and family by Lydia, so she hoped they could feel comfortable while living there. 
Hearing that, Ard became reminded of his past when he was forced to kill Lydia, his best friend, with his own hands. He felt really bad for her and couldn't forgive himself. Sometime later, Ard and his companions were finally included in the battle, where they were tasked with helping Verda in the defensive line. He immediately realized the battle was a battle when he fought the Outer Ones and the Demon's army. Lydia and Sylphie, who led the troops in the vanguard, could easily defeat the enemy, even overpowering their fortifications. But as it turned out, all of that was a ploy by the enemy to weaken their fighting strength by attacking the troops in the defensive line. Knowing that the enemy army commander named Balgan was launching an attack on the troops in the defensive line, Lydia and Sylphie rushed over to help them. Surprisingly, the enemy troops were defeated after Ard overthrew Balgan very easily. Ard's heroic actions making surprise Lydia. Because of that, she brought him and his companions to the capital to meet Varvatos in the palace. Knowing that, Irina and Ginny seemed so excited because they finally met the legendary figure they admired. When Lydia and Sylphie brought Ard and his companions down the palace hall, they were surprised by a sudden attack launched by Alvardo, one of the four heavenly kings known as True Maniac Battle. Alvardo apparently only wanted to test Ard's abilities and wasn't really attacking them. Even so, he soon got into a fight with Lydia, so Varvatos finally appeared and broke them up. Varvatos welcomed Ard and his companions very friendly so that Irina and Ginny became more fascinated by the figure of the Demon Lord. However, it only made Ard feel jealous of Varvatos, who was actually himself. They then converse with Varvatos, who tells them that his army is currently fighting a formidable enemy, and the enemy's leader proclaims himself the Demon King. Upon learning that, Ard became confused because, so far, he was the only one who got the nickname the Demon King. After they met with Varvatos, they discussed the matter with Verda, who speculated that the Demon King, whom Varvatos fought to a draw in the past, wanted them to stop to change history. Verda then told about the appearance of the Demon King three years ago, who launched a massive attack on their territory. Varvatos tried to attack him head-on, but he couldn't defeat the Demon King. In the middle of their conversation, Lydia suddenly came and asked Ard to help her and Sylphie on a raid of Mavilla's the Cursed King, whom Ard remembers as the one who cursed and forced Varvatos to kill her. However, when they arrive at his stronghold, Mavilla's has already been killed by a dark-armored knight, the Demon King, who declares that he will defeat Varvatos and conquer the world before disappearing. After that, Lydia, Ard, and Sylphie rush to the capital to inform Varvatos about the declaration of war that the Demon King had declared. Hearing this, Varvatos gathered his subordinates including Ard and his companions, to discuss the next step. Varvatos declared that they would fight against the Demon King and reclaim their territory that had been controlled by the Demon King. When Ard was alone in his room and thinking about the meaning of all this incident, the Demon King suddenly appeared in front of him and revealed that he was Ard Meteor, but from an imminent future where, after losing everything, he changed his name from Ard to Disaster Rogue. He also has been sent back in time by God with the mission of destroying the world and battling Varvatos. Shortly afterward, Ard and Rogue engage in a conversation, where Rogue says that he intends to destroy the world to save Lydia because, in the end, she will still die if they choose to save the world. Ard, still guilty because he was forced to kill Lydia in the past, is almost persuaded by Rogue, who invites him to save her. But then, Ard became hesitant, so Rogue gave Ard time to consider joining him before vanishing. After a brief conversation with Rogue, Ard meets Ladima, who says she considers Lydia as her family and will do anything to protect her. Upon seeing Ard who looks indecisive, Lydia asks what is troubling him. He cryptically asks what she would do if she had to die to fix a mistake. After getting the answer to his doubts all this time, Ard decided to not think about Lydia's fate, because she had accepted her destiny with all her heart if indeed she had to die for the realization of world peace everyone hoped for. Long story short, the day of the battle arrived. Olivia and her comrades, the four heavenly kings, could easily defeat the monsters. Likewise, Lydia and Sylphie had no trouble when dealing with enemy troops. During the battle, Ard sneaks away to meet Rogue and explains he will not deny Lydia and her repentance and will allow her to die. Upon hearing that, Rogue became very angry and they then got into a fierce fight, which neither of them could win the battle because both have identical strengths. He then reveals his cunning plan to Ard because he had anticipated Ard's decision to keep Lydia dead to save the world. Meanwhile, Irina and Ginny seem worried about Ard fighting with enemy troops on the battlefield. When they were at Ladima's house, they were approached by Ladima, who told them they would go on a mission at Ard's request. The mission turned out to be to infiltrate the enemy base and destroy a crystal that is the source of Disaster Rogue's immortality. However, when they reach it, Ladima betrays them and binds them to magic nullifying crosses, revealing she is working for Rogue. Afterward, Rogue shows Ard the captive girls and orders Ard to join him, or they will die, saying he will kill anyone just to save Lydia. Irina and Ginny escape the crosses using a typical magic taught by Ard. Undaunted, Ladima summons a squad of monsters, saying she will kill anyone just to save Lydia. After losing his immortality, Rogue attacks Ard in a rage. 
They both remember a time they had a fight with Lydia that they regret. An apparition of Lydia restrains Rogue, allowing Ard to kill him. As soon as he dies, Ard, Irina, and Ginny disappeared. Lydia, who knows they are from the future, asks the two girls if the people are happy in the future. She asks them to pass a message to Ard when they confirm it. In the White Void, the mysterious boy thanks Ard for succeeding in the mission. He will not identify himself but says he is an ally. Later, the trio wakes up in the present shortly after they leave, while Olivia and Sylphie notice them falling asleep. Soon afterward, Irina passes on Lydia's message to Ard. No matter what happens, they will always be friends. At the same time, Ard is happy when he sees the apparition of Lydia watching over him. This is the end of this anime. The moral that can be learned from this anime is to simplify things to their true essence. Whenever something goes wrong in our life, or our plans go wrong and things we take for granted suddenly disappear, we have a very simple choice. We can give up, or we can decide to turn tragedy into opportunity. Get Atlas VPN today and get a special 3-year deal only for $1.99 per month. Link in the description.